Hello, welcome to another edition of Capper Comparison Picks. Take two, because last time Nora knocked the camera over and I taped like seven minutes without, just with the camera facing down. Unreal. So, but anyway, welcome to Capper Comparison Picks. Today I will be giving you the picks for UFC Vegas 31. Uh, I believe these are all a more prelim fights. I did do a video yesterday for early prelims, be sure to check that out. I also did a recap of how I did last week in UFC 264, so yeah, absolutely, check that out. And uh, without further ado, since this is my second tape on the take on this, let's get underway. We've got, starting off at Bantamweight, we've got Khalid Taha, the warrior, <laughs> 13 and three. The favorite here, this is a minus 165 favorite. This is actually 161 now. It moved a little bit. I just didn't re-fix the, fix the line on the board. And he's taking on Sergey Morozov. Morozov, 16 and 4. Did I just say that? Did I repeat myself? Taha's 13 and 3. Morozov, 16 and 4. He's the underdog at plus now it's a plus 141 on bet online. I just, I, like I said, I didn't increase it, but uh, underdog at plus 141 or 135. It's, it'll be roughly around there once you get to it on your sports book. Um, let's talk, discuss a little bit about the favorite, Khalid Taha. Khalid Taha is coming off a loss to Heoni Barcelos, but Heoni Barcelos is like, Still, even though he took that he took that L from Mobsar Evloev, he's still in my in my personal top ten for bantamweights. Mobsar Evloev is top five in my opinion. So um, take that for what you will. Taha lost to him by unanimous decision, going all the way. Before that, he, he should have had a victory over Bruno Silva. He uh, choked him out, submitted him with a triangle in round three. However, uh, he was on steroids. Usada overturned it, made it a draw, no contest. So that's Khalid Taha. He's fighting out of Arena Dortmund. That's in Germany, uh, the home of one of the best German soccer teams, Borussia Dortmund. I'm a big fan. But anyway, uh, Khalid Taha. 28 years old, Morozov, the underdog, a slightly older at 32, but you know what? They're both in their prime, okay? Sergey Morozov, 16 and four, he fights out of Kazakhstan. He fights out of Erkin Kush. Remember, I, I, it sounds like something you would smoke. Let's pack up some of that Erkin Kush, you know, a little sour diesel and Erkin Kush. But um, anyway, you know who fights out of there? Zako, Zuglas, Z Zulgas Zumagalov, who you guys just see win last week against Jerome Rivera. So anyway, um, the Kazakh fighter is uh, coming off a loss to Umar Nurmagomedov. He got rear naked choked in the second round. But before that, he was on a five fight win streak in a M1 Global Promotion. Not that bad of a promotion. Um, Rittenhouse, a UFC fighter, ultimate, uh, not UFC, ultimate fighter, contender, whatever, whatever you want to call the ultimate fighting. He's on there, Rittenhouse. He's had lost, one of his four losses was to Rittenhouse earlier in the career, but then he revenged that loss in 2019 by beating Rittenhouse, and that's one of the five wins in that five fight win streak before his debut against Umar Nurmagomedov. Man, that's a mouthful. Okay, so let's discuss or let, now let's see what these cappers have to say. I got a whole new flock of cappers from, you know, different from yesterday. Not new to me, but yeah, I'm just saying, not new to the show either if you watch. You'll be, they'll, many of them be familiar to you. Okay, taking, we're gonna start with the favorite. And this, these lines actually, like I said, they moved a little. This is actually 161 now, and this is a plus 141. Plus 141. These are, and I got my, 
uh, odds from Bet Online. Okay, taking Khalid Taha. We've got um, Greedo from Greedo Plays. Oh, man, these markers are starting to go shit. He's taking Khalid Taha by decision, and this marker is Norris. Okay. <laughs> We're going to jump over Sergey Morozov, taking him by decision. We've got the uh, MMA guru, not the one that was exposed from the United States. <laughs> That's a different, whole different story. This is the one with the knit cap from the UK. Uh, MMA guru saying Morozov by decision. Another shitty marker. Man, I got to get stock in black markers. Then we've got, jumping back to Kali Taha, we've got, uh, um, ooh, we got a split pick, Pub Sports Radio. I watched uh, Pub Sports Radio, the Die Hard MMA podcast with Clint McLean. His special guest was Dan Tom. Dan Tom is on the side of Taha here. Dan Tom. Dan Tom. Um, but Clint is over here with taking Morozov. So I like when the when his guests, the Clint and his guests split because they both make compelling arguments for both sides. Then we've got some um, uh, perfect parlay pursuit. But it's not all of them. It's not two of them. It's just Luke. Luke is the sole taker of. Khalid Taha, he did the five star ranking system and he got Khalid Taha winning, uh, I don't know, his his little system, he, he had more stars at the end of it than Morozov. Um, Sergey Morozov taking him, obviously are the other guys from Perfect Parlay Pursuit, that is Alex and Dan. Dan, the man, Batman, Alex, Euro, Under King. And then, keep this moving. Finally, lab one, two, three, four. The last uh, capper I've got, it's cappers. Both the guys from Tiger Bomb. Tiger Bomb MMA, that's Johnny and Jose. Both of those guys are saying by decision for Morozov, the underdog here, coming out with the capper majority, edging him out barely. So I'm going to take that plus money. I'm going to take the plus. It's actually, like I said, plus 141 now. But I like the uh, Kazakh fighter. He's, his his uh, Urkin Kush, you know, they're coming off that uh, nice win. As a, as a facility, they have that uh, nice win from Zaka or Zalgas Zumagalov over Jerome Vera last week. So, you know, the energy is feeling really good. I don't know much more about Erkin Kush except for its awesome name. And they got, it's got Morozov and Zako fighting out of there. I'm going to take Morozov by decision here for the safe bet. I mean, I'm not confident at all with this, but I'm taking the plus money. I will put it in a, this parlay, and I might play it in a couple other parlays too. Nothing against Klitaha. He's got powerful, powerful strikes. Every punch he throws, he packs it full of power. So, and he, he puts it all in, he come out. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna take the underdog at plus money, Morozov. He might not have as much UFC experience as Taha, but he does have as much professional fight experience. He has a uh, loss to Mosar Avloev too, I do believe. And um, I think I don't don't quote me on that. I can't remember his tapology. I didn't write it down. But he has fought some talent in his uh, oh that that written house. Did I mention that? I think I mentioned it last show. There's a guy, I think his name is Scott Rittenhouse. 
He uh, he lost one of his four losses is to him back in like 2015, 2016. He revenged that loss in 2019 in M1 Global before getting signed to the UFC and losing to Umar Nurmagomedov. Um, so, yeah, I'm taking Moore's off at plus money. Moving on! Next, we have the female fight between Amanda Lemos and Montserrat Ruiz. Amandina. Amandinha. Amanda Lemos, Amandina. Amandinha is coming off uh, three back to good wins. She beat Lavinia Souza, ground and pound, round one. Before that, Mizuki Inoue, unanimous decision. And before that, Miranda Granger, rear naked choke in round one. All three good female fighters, and Amanda Lemos got the W against all three of them. She uh, fights out of Brazil, the Marajo brothers. I looked at their uh, tapology list of fighters. There's only two females in there, and they're not any names that I recognize. I think they're uh, promotional, like uh, regional league fighters, but they're still listed as pros, not amateurs. Um, she's got a four inch height, four inch reach advantage over Conejo Montserrat Ruiz. But look at this gross minus 500. That's disgusting. Disgusting. I would never put a pick on, on, I would never put a bet at minus 500. You definitely have to prop that out and it's a female fight. So good luck getting a positive number unless you pick the round and it's even decision, I imagine it's still going to be negative number. I don't know. Montserrat Ruiz. Conejo. Conejo translates to bunny or rabbit, which is my son's uh, Asian. He was born year of the rabbit, Brandon. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Conejo the bunny is coming off uh, a win against Cheyenne Bays. It's spelt Bays, but pronounced Bays, where after her victory, she like she'd spit on her or something, and Cheyenne's like, I'll follow you home, bitch. And uh, you know, like it was it was it was like a the after fight fight, well, almost fight was more exciting than the actual fight fight, because Montserrat Ruiz Louis Ruiz, she's only she's like uh she's got a mean headlock. <laughs> I heard it from more than just one capper. That's pretty much her bag of tricks is headlock, but I, I tend to disagree. She's a, she's a grappler. She's training out of 10th uh, Planet Jiu Jitsu. So she's got Jiu Jitsu. That's uh, um, Eddie Bravo school. There were three females listed there. Once again, I'm not familiar with any three of them, but uh, I, I do like 10th Planet. I do like Eddie Bravo. And uh, Montserrat Ruiz does have some uh, wrestling. She has some grappling pedigree. Before Cheyenne Bay, she beat, uh, she beat two, uh, this girl named Yanisa Morandin by Keylock. Again, weird. And that was in Invicta. A scarf hold to key lock. That's what you know. What scarf hold is it's like a head headlock. It's, that's her bag of tricks. Uh, her only loss. She's ten of one. Her only loss was to Danielle Taylor, who at one time was in the UFC. Now I think she might be PFL. I don't know, but she's definitely not in the UFC anymore. And though, like I said, those were Invicta fights. Cheyenne Bays was her UFC debut, which she came out on top. But the thing is, plus 370 for Montserrat Ruiz, Conejo, the bunny. Man, I don't know. Let's, uh, let's see what these cappers have to say. I think you already know what the cappers have to say. But, um, oh, aside from 10th Planet Jiu Jitsu, Ruiz also has, trains out of King's MMA. And besides, there's some girls that fight out of there. We've got, uh, Queen of Violence, Ariana Lipsky, she fights out of there. Sabino Mazzo, she fights out of there. And the Beast, Gabby Garcia, she's like bigger than me, she's awesome. 
I think she's like uh, undefeated. She's got a no contest. But Gabby Garcia, heavyweight, female heavyweight, awesome. But uh, so let's see what these cappers have to say about this one. I think you already know how this is going to go just by looking at the odds, but you might be surprised as well. Okay. Taking Amanda Lemos. Lemos, Lemos, whatever. We've got um, Tiger Bomb. Both Johnny and Jose are taking Amanda Lemos. They don't see any path for victory for Montserrat Cruz. Uh, both the guys from Pub Sports Radio, Clint and Dan Tom, both taking Amanda Lemos. Um, Greedo. Greedo's got Lemos by TKO in the third. That's what I'm talking about. Right there, Greedo. Thank you. That's what I'm talking. That should be plus. That will be plus money. You look up knockout third round for that'll be a plus money. Thank you for making that a plus money pick, Greedo. And uh, finally, or not finally. Next we have uh, the Guru MMA Guru. He's saying Lemos by decision. I gotta check that prop out. Wonder. I'm curious. Wonder if that's plus money. I don't think it's going to be. I don't think so. But it may. It may I don't know. Uh, and then we've got the perfect parlay pursuit. But once again, it is not Triple P certified. The only one, Dan. Well, this, this is the deal. Dan and Luke both take uh, Lemos as their pick. However... For betting reasons, they're jumping over here. I'm gonna write this big because there's only one contrarian picker. Perfect parlay pursuit. Luke's brother, Alex, the Euro under king, is the only one that was, he didn't even mention taking. Like, Dan and Luke were like, Oh, the value, this is dog or, Dan said dog or pass, so he's going to go here, but he's, he did say, I'm picking Lemos, but it's dog or pass when it comes to betting. Luke, pretty much the same. Luke said, oh, we're Triple P certified on the pick for Lemos and on the bet for Ruiz, but that's not correct because Alex never said he's taking Lemos at all. He was hard in his decision. He's taken Ruiz at plus 370 for the upset here. God bless you, uh, the Euro under King Alex. I too am taking the high heavy favorite. I can't be silly. She's also got, she's coming off those great three back to back good wins. And she's got four inch height, four inch reach advantage. Ruiz. Yeah, she's 10 and 1, has that one loss to Danielle Taylor by Udance Decision a while ago, but I don't I don't see her coming out on top of this one. I think uh Lamos should be, be able to take care of this pretty easily. Uh I don't think it's gonna be within distance though, because Ruiz, the Mexican, even Conejo, rabbits, they don't beat anything. They what they don't, they can't, they don't, they're, they're, they're not, they're docile. You know, they don't, what, can, do they even bite? I don't think they bite, they don't scratch. All they do is thumper. They thump with their feet and that's all in, only in defense. What, so I don't, I don't see, but that has nothing to do, it's just her nickname. But I'm saying, I'm not taking Conejo. I'm taking Lemos. I'm not even gonna hedge back Conejo. I don't think she's gonna be able to do it. At, even at plus 360s, very inviting and I want to because Alex but I have to take Lemos and I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna go with a TKO third round just like uh, just like my boy Greedo that'll make that a plus money like I said I'm all about the plus money minus 500 is totally disgusting forget that so 
Moving on, next, we've got D-Rod, Daniel Rodriguez taking on Preston Parsons. Preston Parsons is a short notice replacement for, uh, I want to say, Abu Bukhar Nurmagomedov, maybe? I can't remember who, but he is a, Par Preston Parsons is a short notice replacement. Uh, D-Rod comes in with a record of 14-2 as a professional, moderately decent, 2-1 to one favorite, over 2-1 to one favorite, it's at minus 2, this is incorrect, it's down minus 265, not minus 250, it moved a little bit, and uh, Preston Parsons is at a plus 225, so that also increased. So 225 and what 265. These are the latest odds according to Bet Online. I can place the bet and get these numbers right now. Okay. D Rod 14 and 2 fighting out of uh, 10th Planet. Eddie Bravo again. <laughs> 10th Planet Jiu Jitsu. Also, he's on Tapology. He's listed fighting out of Tap Out, LA. I didn't even know that facility was even Tap Out. I thought that faded back in the early 2000s. That was the last time I saw a Tap Out t shirt, was back then. But I, I still have one. I bought it way back, way back. I want to say 2004 or something ridiculous. But anyway, Daniel D Rod, Daniel Rodriguez. Is coming off a win against Mike Perry, unanimous decision. Before that, he took a loss against Nicholas Dalby, unanimous decision, but some people say that could have uh, went the other way. Who knows? But before that, I'm most impressed with a TKO in the first round over Dwight Grant, who I'm very high on Dwight Grant. He's got, um, D-Rod's got a two inch height and two inch reach advantage over the newcomer in Preston Parsons. Preston Parsons making his UFC debut. He does have a slight age advantage, 26, D-Rod 34. However, 34 uh, welterweight is still, that's still prime years. He's still in the prime. He's not, he's not over the hill yet. Um, Preston Parsons, man, he's been in three different, like, uh, regional promotions. His most recent is Combat Night Pro, where he beat Jeff Peterson by armbar in the second round. Uh, he did fight for a while at Titan FC, and he has a loss to Mike Perry, where D-Rod just beat him by unanimous decision. He lost to Mike Perry in 2015 in House of Fame was the promotion. He lost by TKO round one, but that was a very prime Mike Perry when he was still very hungry. When D-Rod beat him, I think he had his pregnant wife in his corner and that's when he was getting in fights in hotel lobbies with 60 year old men. So, um, Preston Parsons trains out of Elevate MMA that's in Jacksonville, Florida. Matter of fact, Dan Tom from uh, from the, the guest on Clint's show there, said he trained with Preston Parsons way back when Preston Parsons was like uh, 18 years old, he said, at Elevate MMA in Jacksonville. Jacksonville Beach, if you wanna be precise. Um, so let's see what these handicappers have to say about this fight. Rodriguez, remember, minus 265 favorite. Parsons plus 225 underdog. So, taking D Rod, we've got all the boys from Perfect Parlay Pursuit making Triple P certified pick for Daniel Rodriguez. Then we've got um, both guys from Tiger Bomb. Johnny is saying first round KO. Jose didn't really say, so I'm just gonna write Johnny's pick here. But they're both taking D-Rod. Uh, Pub Sports Radio. 
Even though Dan Tom did train with Preston Parsons when he was 18, uh, he's leaning Rodriguez and uh, Clint is saying by submission. So right sub here for Clint. And then we've got uh, Greedo taking D-Rod by decision. And uh, MMA Guru thinks D-Rod's going to knock him out TKO round two. Now one thing I will throw in about uh, Preston Parsons, all his victories, all nine of them are by submission. He is a BJJ black belt. So that is his, that you think that's his path to victory. But D-Rod does train out of 10th planet. So, I mean, you can't, you just can't say he's gonna, his, 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 I think, Daniel Rodriguez, I'm pretty sure he's got a black belt too. I don't know for sure. I didn't do that much in-depth research on the thing. But uh, yeah, this is a full capper consensus. And a full capper consensus is when all the handicappers pick one to or one fighter. That's right. It's when all the handicappers pick one side, and in this case, they're all taking D-Rod Daniel Rodriguez to get the job done over the newcomer, making his UFC debut, Preston Parsons. I too have no reason not to go with against the consensus. So I'm gonna take D-Rod. Like I said, this is a very chalky card. There's, Next, uh, the next group of three fights that I cover will be a lot closer. Wasn't next this time. one was this fight here is pretty close. It's kind of wasn't, on the fence. Wasn't next time three captains because Parsons and the So what? I don't know. I didn't do the research yet for tomorrow's show. No, next next time in the in the back in the back. I don't know what you're trying to say. In the future. In the past. I, we had three of them yesterday, remember? I know, that's what I was asking. Oh, well this, this show we only got one. And it's for D-Rod, and I'm taking them to get the job done by, with it, I just say within distance. No, I'm gonna actually say uh, round two. I'm gonna call the round, round two. That should make that minus 265 a plus number by round betting D-Rod round two. I think Parsons might la last the first round. I mean, look at Chris Moutinho last week, right? But anyway. That's the video. Uh, That's what I, the video's all about. So, to recap. Gotcha! Thank you. To recap, I've got... Yes, you did. Can I have dinner? Can, can you see I'm in the middle? I'm finishing the show. Can you ask me after? To recap, I've got Sergey Morozov winning a decision over Khalid Taha. This is the closest fight on this show. The other ones are super chalky. Um, next, I've, I'm pretty confident Amanda Lemos is going to take it to the bunny to Conejo Montserrat Ruiz, but Alex from Perfect Probably Pursuit seems to differ, beg to differ. So, I mean, I guess you could, some people, you could say she's a live dog. I'm not gonna say that. I don't see how she's gonna beat Amanda Lemos. The, what are the ages? Oh, she does have a little age advantage because Lemos is 34, Ruiz 28. Papa, but, uh, head. Oh, great. I'm glad you put a lot of time into that picture. And then finally, I've got, with the full capper consensus, I've got D-Rod, Daniel Rodriguez, beating <laughs> Preston, <laughs> Preston Parsons. Iron Claw! Iron Claw! So that's what it feels like. <laughs> uh, you ask your brother what it feels like. I used to give it to him all the time. So, 
Thanks for watching. Be sure to give me that thumbs up. Leave your comments on who you think is going to win these fights. Obviously, the chalky ones are, I already know, but if you're a contrarian, I'd like to hear your side of, the, side of the story. I want to hear your picks. And this one, it could go either way. It really he could. It Taha did, uh, did get that, take Peony <laughs> Barcelos to a unanimous decision. <laughs> I mean, not many people can he say that. It hurts and tickles. Yep. So, um, yeah, gather the info. Place the bets and cash the tickets. Place the bets and cash the tickets. Thank you for watching. Good luck on these bets, and I will see you next episode. Thank you.